Hello students, today we are going to study applications in e-governance which is a part of unit 5. The total topic is developing e-governance for government to government transactions. Now let's study first the introduction. The introduction of e-governance starts with information technology that is ICT. ICT is information and communication technology which is important for governing the total revolution. This will impact the efficiency, productivity, reach and sharing of information in a quality delivered by the service industry. It looks into the welfare of the people. So this PPT basically explains you the impact of communication revolution governing the total society in a sustainable way. The productivity and reach is high where the audiences are contacted through the information technology which is controlled and governed by the government also. Let us study the definition of e-governance. E-governance can be defined as use of information and communication technology, government enhances range of functions, quality information and services are provided, cost effective. So this basic PPT is explaining you that information and technology can enhance the value of functions given to people. Government is functioning in a proper way. Now the reach and the quality is important where the communication or the contact with the public is important. So we take the e-governance aspect or the e-portals to communicate with the people in a quality way. It is a cost effective way to generally go to the people and do the work in a definite way. Now let us study the World Bank which refers e-government as a form of use of information technologies, ability to transform relations with citizens, businesses and other arms of government. Technologies can serve better. It is delivery of government services to citizens. So according to World Bank, it is also recognized that e-governance has become important in modern era. The impact to the public is generally reached or enhanced through the use of information technology or through internets interfacing public life and it is a feedback which comes to the government where the frustrations or the positive impact or the policy implementation can be done in an effective way. Three tiers of e-governance are government to business that is G2B, government to customers that is G2C and government to government. So government has to communicate with the whole society. It is to customers or it to business houses or to other bodies of the government like a central government communicating to state government or central government communicating to local bodies. <music> Types of interactions which occur, G2C is government to citizens, G2G is government to government, G2G is central to local government. G2E is government to employees, G2B is government to business. So all these sectors are impacted by this communication technology and here the various arms of the government can communicate to business or to the organizations or to the employees in a sustainable way. The customers can speak and have a say in the political authority and the vote and the feedback can determine the implementation of the uh, basic rules and regulations which are formulated by the government for the public regulations. Government to citizen. This offers ICT services to citizens in an efficient and economical way. This strengthens the relationship between government and citizens. It is instant message goes directly to public administrators. It is cast remote electronic votes and instant opinion voting. So if government wants to know how it is performing or what is the impact of a policy or what is the impact of rules and regulations, how people feel about it. So the political sentiments can be measured and can be evaluated by these portals. The instant messaging and the instant opinion feeding is easy through information technology. Government to citizens, the transactions such as payment of service, city utility services, such as name and address changes, applying for services or grants, transferring existing services are more convenient. So government to 
citizen communication is little simpler in which like you have to pay electricity bills or you have to pay water bills or telephone bills now can be done through online portals if you want to change your address or name this can be done in a convenient way otherwise you had to go to the office collect the form fill it manually send it by post get the confirmation so it was a long way now it is easy and instant because you have the websites by which you can have a direct communication with the government government to government it is the rampant integration of e forms of government processes it is use of technologies to cut down waste it is e government relates to how services are delivered and how they are being implemented so it is all the forms which are used in the processing of uh, communicating with each government or it is the kind of the policies the welfare schemes or other forms of government administration have all come to the uh, sites and people can download these forms can fill these forms sent back to the government offices it has become easy more paper wastage has been stopped because the files have been uh, generally used in offices in a traditional way but now the e portals and the emails have reduced this impact and the work and the communication has become more efficient government to government transactions also uh, include that governments around the world have gradually turned to internet technologies it's a more proactive approach in developing comparable services of e-commerce and e-businesses it is a proactive that is uh, it's not something very passive it is you act in response to the public opinion whatever are the problems you update you try to give the news the information and try to solve the problems of the people and this helps you in the policy implementation in a better way benefits of g2g that is government to government transactions involve it is simple information dissemination that is a one way communication it's a two way communication when you request and you get a response it is service and financial transactions it is integration that is horizontal and vertical integration it is political participation so benefits are immense where generally you have simple information given to people uh, the housing schemes the loan schemes uh, the welfare schemes or anything which government is taking in the interest of the public is generally given through the websites it is all the service and the financial transactions are happening through websites now let's study the government to business transactions see government to business is the online non commercial interaction between the local and the central government it is commercial business sector communicates it refers to the conduction through the internet between government agencies and trading companies now when businesses perform they have a kind of a commitment towards the government also by paying their taxes by doing their compliances towards the society in form where they do not have to hurt the environment or they do not have to break the laws they have to pay the other taxes also so all this has become online the communication with the government has become easy we can download and see the forms fill it and pay our duties or pay our bills in a easy way government to businesses that is b2g is the professional transactions between company and district city and federal regulatory agencies b2g usually includes recommendations to complete measurement evaluation of books and contracts generally it is a kind of a contract signed between the government because you have to take licenses you have to do registries or you have to take permissions related to the establishment of the companies or you have to enforce the company act or you have to come into a agreement which generally relates to the judiciary and to the legal aspects so all these can be now fulfilled through the online aspects which has become paperless and easy benefits for business e government reduces cost electronic trading saves time e government provides a greater amount of information that business needs for performing their functions first is obviously it is time saving and cost saving and it is more information shared to public because everything becomes transparent there is less cheating and there is less fraud because you are giving each and every moment 
and a money detail to the public. So, the opinions and the kind of the uh, feedback which you get from the people and the stakeholders now becomes very easy. Let us see the uh, disadvantages. First is the network reliability. Uh, government bodies can influence public opinion and prejudice. Hidden agendas can genuinely uh, be thrown to the public. It is lack of privacy for businesses. First of all, uh, the Indian economy is not having as much reliability of network services where your servers are not performing efficiently. So, whenever if you want to do work in emergency, the reliability on the e-servers or the browsers is uh, sometimes difficult because the quality communication technologies still are not floating in the market and the government bodies if they control all the uh, public opinion then they generally advertise themselves and try to implement their hidden agendas or try to tilt the public opinion where the uh, total health of the democracy is degraded. The government channels control their publicity, they control their advertisement which is generally harmful for the society. Now, examples of government to business that is first let us uh, discuss few things which e-governance is impacted by. First is the e-tender box that is the ETB. This is developed by the government logistics department that is GLD. Users can use ETB system to download the resources and gain the services from the e-tender box and the uh, logistic department. That is if you are a supplier and you want to participate in the government buying and selling, you generally go to the e-tender box. This is the option where you can download the forms, try to quote your rates and you can float your tender through the government portals and get the contracts. Government to business also involves e-procurement. Now e-procurement provides a simple convenient online ways for suppliers of participating bureaucrat departments and suppliers of government logistic departments to provide low valued goods and services. Now e-procurement is a procedure where the government generally tries to give benefit to the SSIs that is the small scale industries. They can also connect to the government channels and give their products and services in form of handicrafts or other low valued items which are used by railways and other government buying bodies. So, they can have their uh, stay or they can have their say in uh, the kind of the logistic departments where they can route their goods through the government portals, have the information when the government demand is arising and try to connect with the mainstream demand procedure. Government to business procedure also involves the online financial help for businesses that is grants, loans, business guides, funding for businesses and small scale firms. Now, the, the loan schemes and how the government banks are working has become very transparent and all these schemes are generally floating on the websites. You can read the information about each loan scheme and the welfare scheme which the government is floating. Maybe it is for women empowerment or for small scale industries or promoting a certain industry like agriculture or generally promoting some kind of business which is not gaining a kind of a momento or flip or it is being catalyzed by the government efforts. So, if we want to connect with the mainstream businesses, we can read the websites and see what is the kind of the financial aid, help, the interest rate and what are the formalities to complete to get the financial aid from the banks and the other institutes. Now, let us study the government to business. Here is the public private partnership that is PPP based on e-governance projects which are hugely successful in India. The United Telecommunications Limited known as UTL is a major player in India on PPP based e-governance projects. Now this slide is telling you that most of the government projects are floating successfully in the market. Uh, the BSNL, the telecommunication industry are doing well where they are serving the public through online portals. The network connections usually have floated in the market with successful commercial gains also. The public is benefited and the response is positive response for the government. Government to business, e-governance is a two-way process or a communication protocol. E-governance to each beneficiary and ensures that services intend to reach desired individual has been met with. So, in the end, e-governance is by the governed, for the government 
and of the governed. So governed here is of the public. The benefit goes to the public. It is by the public and for the public. So the public democracy is protected and strengthened by the e-portals and the e-channels which have been floated by the government. They have been the designed, they have been controlled by the government for the interest and the welfare of the public. Now let's study the purpose of e-governance. This is the best form of e-governance. This cuts down the unwanted interference of too many layers while delivering governmental services. E-governance is a wonderful tool to bring transparency, accountability and whistleblowing in India. Now the best form of e-governance is that the layers of interference, that is when you try to go to the public, you have to go to the local bodies or you have other government agents which float in the market to get the work done. So we can cut down all these stakeholders and directly communicate to the citizens. So the welfare directly reaches to the public. The corruption is less and the leakage of money and the wastage is less. So at least whatever the amount is decided for the public reaches down to the economy or reaches down to the democracy to make people strong. When you try to govern e-governance, this is a tool which generally reduces the cost and impacts the life of the people in a quality way. Purpose of e-governance in government can transform citizen service, access to information for citizens, citizens economic and social opportunities and it makes life better. Now the information which is shared by the government through websites is teaching people, making them aware Sometimes it is that we lose our newspapers, we lose papers, but when the websites are loaded and flooded with information, it is in your handset, uh, you can read the information anytime. It is service to the public, that is the housing schemes or the loan schemes or the public benefits, which is the insurance schemes launched by the Prime Minister or the other payment schemes, which are for the benefit of the public are being loaded through the websites. It's more opportunities created for the people, so they have more say in the public opinion and their needs and desires are fulfilled by the government in an effective way. Now let's study the uh, pragati, that is the proactive governance and timely implementation. This is a multi-purpose and a multi-modal platform which is generally floated by the government of India. It is e-transparency and e-accountability. It is integrating an interactive platform. It uses technologies like digital data management, video conferencing, and geosaptal technology. It helps prime ministers to monitor and follow up timely implementation of projects with state secretaries and other chief secretaries of the state. So this is the proactive governance project, which is floated by the government of India, a direct control for the prime minister he can talk to the IS officers, to the bureaucrats and to the state secretaries for what is happening according to each policy implementation, what is desired by the government. So the timely follow up is fast and here the paperwork is reduced where the postage time adds to the kind of the delay of the projects. Now let's study the challenges of e-governance. This is lack of integrated services it's population with different languages. It is administrative and legal issues. It is technological challenges, corruption, mechanism to deal with e-waste is less, absence of privacy, and it is poor cyber security in India. Now, when we talk about the qualities of e-governance, but this has huge challenges to make the systems more efficient. First is the population of India is very large. To communicate with people in Hindi or English becomes literally difficult because we have regional languages floating in the country where the public access to information becomes meager. The administrative and the legal problems related to right to information and to the security is a big issue where we do not have sufficient laws and proper administrative channels to communicate the problems which are faced by these portals. There is a lot of corruption in terms of the implementation of the projects which reduces the quality and the kind of the public say becomes less. Mm -hmm. 
Now, let us study the objective how do we overcome these challenges. First is to simplify governance for government, citizens and businesses. It is to connect all parties and support processes and activities. It is government administration more transparent, speedy and accountable. See in spite of all the challenges, the aim of e-governance is to uh, simplify the government administration. It is to more connect with the public, it is to more generally a kind of a decision making impact which the government is facing taken to the public. So, these are issues which need to be sorted out and as all the parties and all the stakeholders of the societies, whether it is businesses, the NGOs, that is the non-governmental organizations, the citizens, the political parties, everybody has to come to a common platform to discuss and try to uh, implement the programs because whatever is taken from the government is a public utility network which has to be transformed to the impact of success because your say and your decision making is important. Each sector has to be involved in order to implement the policy in a correct way. Let us study the delivery model of G2G. The interaction domains generally are four sorts of activities take place. First is pushing data over internet, it is regulative services, general holidays, public hearing schedules, issue briefs, notifications. It is a two way communication and a dialogue with agencies to post issues, comments or requests. Now, the delivery model, this of the uh, e-government project can be generally successful. First of all, if you have full information and data, which generally has to be taken to the internet or to the website, that is the government orders have to come to the public portal. Most of the time, the information is missing, which makes difficult for the public to read and to implement. It is the regulative services, that is what are the rules and regulations, what are the holidays or what are the financial impacts or what is the money paid, the taxation, the penalty. So, most of the forums, the information is missing, which is not available. Still, the field of e-governance is large because the kind of the public life which is impacted by the government project not only um, revolves from the welfare schemes, but it is also the regulatory, the legal, uh, the public health, the other aspects of life which are important and which are difficult. So, all the information is not there. So, if one leakage is there, the sectors are not connected. Uh, delivery model of G2G basically involves conducting transactions, that is lodging tax returns, applying for services and grants. It is governance, that is individual participation by informing the individual, representing an individual, consulting an individual and involving the individual. So, the government uh, model which has to design has to be personalized, it has to be customized because every person has a different problem. He belongs to a different segment and the strata is different, the status is different, the money paying capacity is different. So, we have to directly involve the individuals and listen to the individual problems which requires a huge administration whether it is policing or it is judiciary or it is public health given to the people. So, see if suppose a woman has a problem related to a particular area. Now, the police force in that particular area is working with a different model which is generally different what is there in a metro city. So, the problem is specific regarding a region. This has to be taken to the central government or to the local government needs specific helps and specific designs which need to be implemented by the government portals. The initiative of government of India is to first regulate the customs and excise, is to regulate Indian railways, the postal department, the passport and visa and then is the taxation and returns filing. So, the initiative in this field has started, the railways are doing a good job, the passport and the uh, visa issues are being sorted through the online portals and the taxations are also done through the online portal. But still there are many fields which are not touched by the e-governance where the welfare schemes and the NGOs, the local business houses, the local environmental bodies have not come up to that quality of services and interaction with the public. So, these portals also need to reach to the public life. Though the railways and other sectors are doing a good job, 
but still they need lot of modification, they need lot of interaction in terms to connect with the public. Now let's study the summary of this lecture. In this we have studied the impact of e-governance on public life. It is important for government to connect with the public through information and communication technology. The life of people can be controlled and designed if the websites and the internet connections are well. The efficiency and the quality of operations given by the government can enhance the value of life for people. In democracy, the government can connect with the public opinion, take their basic views and impact the public life by giving services in form of financial, legal and other aspects related to public life. It is important for the government to look into the details of public wants and demands and govern their initiatives for policy regulations. Thank you students.